There are 10 ways the iPhone 14 Pro is better than the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Number one is the battery life. The Pixel comes with a larger battery versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max's slightly smaller battery, but it's not just the battery size that matters here. The way the iPhone uses the battery is also way more efficient, meaning that the iPhone will last far longer on a single charge than the Pixel 7 Pro. Yes, the Pixel does charge marginally faster than the iPhone, but with the more efficient battery of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, it's unlikely you'll need to charge it during the day. Next up are the cameras on the iPhone. And not specifically the image quality, but how smooth the lens transitions are. Now I've seen this across multiple Android phones and from every manufacturer, but when recording video and you want to zoom in and zoom out and you know switch between lenses, the iPhone is by far the smoothest that I have ever seen. Now yes, you can still just about see when the lens is switched from a slight shift in the image, but I still see some big shifts in color and change changes when switching lenses on the Pixel 7 Pro. Number three is something that's improving as time goes on, but given Apple's market share of the you know, whole mobile phone market, there are far more accessories available for the iPhone than the Pixel. In fact, one of my favorite phone cases from Magback, who make this magnetic case that sticks to any magnetic surface, has only just come to the Pixel 7 Pro. But because of the wider market share of Apple, you will be able to find a much wider range of accessories from cases to mounts, camera lenses, magnetic wallets, tripods, screen protectors in all shapes, colors, and sizes. But for me, that meant I had to wait around three months to get the case that I wanted, and now I can stick my phone onto metal surfaces and <laughs> once again get weird looks from people on how I've managed to stick my phone to a, like a vertical surface without falling off. For number four, it's the screen on the iPhone. Now the Pixel for sure has a great looking screen, but over on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, it is a lot brighter than the Pixel. Now the Pixel does manage to hit 1500 nits at peak brightness compared to the 2000 nits on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is better than what the Pixel can do. So the iPhone will be far better on those bright and sunny days when looking at your phone. Now the iPhone screen is also more color accurate than the Pixel, giving the iPhone a better overall screen for day-to-day -day use than the Pixel including something which is arguably better again for number five, the always on display. Now with the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max this year, Apple introduced their first ever always on display technology, which works in a similar way to the Pixel and other Androids to be fair, by reducing the screen's refresh rate down to just one Hertz. Now on the Pixel, it removes everything from the screen and just shows you what needs to be on that always on display. You get a black background with the time, the date, the weather, and some notification icons, all which are in black and white. There's no color at all anywhere on the screen. Whereas with the iPhone and the always on display, it resembles more of their regular home screen, just dimmed down because basically that's exactly what Apple have done. They've essentially taken the regular home screen of your iPhone and reduced it down to one hertz, including the brightness. Now this means you still get some color on the always on display and you also get more rich widgets on the screen. And overall, it just looks way more appealing and more usable than the extremely limited version on Pixel and in Android in general. Now, given that this is Apple's first attempt, it's gonna be really interesting to see how they develop this feature in the upcoming iPhone 15 and beyond. Number six is something that I don't quite understand. Perhaps you can enlighten me in the comments, but when using portrait mode on the Pixel, I constantly have issues with edge detection. Now, there's always a piece of someone's hair or an ear which has been missed by the Pixel, which takes what could be a you know potentially near realistic DSLR type photo look obviously amateur is like an ear gets blurred out or a chunk of their hair gets mistaken as part of the background. Now it's something that I don't have issues with across other Android phones like particularly the S22 Ultra is very very good at that if you want to go and watch the camera test that compared all three of these which again I'll link down below but going back to the iPhone here it doesn't suffer these same issues and always seems to be better at identifying the whole person from the background of a portrait photo. If you take a lot of portrait photos like I do then this becomes very noticeable over time. Changing up a little away from camera now let's get to performance because this is one area where the iPhone 14 Pro and the Pro Max wins hands down. Now whilst they are fairly on par with each other when generally browsing around and launching apps and scrolling social media, when doing more intensive tasks like editing and exporting photos or videos and certainly loading games, the iPhone is so much faster. Now you can use Geekbench here as a way to see this in terms of numbers. When run on both phones, the scores aren't quite double, but the iPhone is almost 100% faster than the Pixel 7 Pro. Number eight on the list is Dynamic Island. Now love it or hate it, the Dynamic Island does take up too much space compared to the older style notch, but recently has come in handy with some recent updates from the likes of Uber Eats and Ringo, a parking app I use 
batteries and just so many others. They've actually started to be genuinely useful. For example, when I park my car to have the dynamic island change to a countdown to remind me how long I have left on my car. So rather than having to set an alarm or having to keep going in and out of the app to check how much time I have left, the implementation does work really well. It doesn't interfere with other apps whilst you're using your phone. It's just this small but constant reminder of what's going on. Now, there are, of course, certainly arguments both for and against Dynamic Island, but at least these type of updates are great use cases. Next up is MagSafe, something most Android users and I argue even most iPhone users aren't actually that bothered with. But MagSafe is one of those iPhone accessories that you, you don't really realize how good they are until you actually start using it yourself. Now, it started off with me getting this MagBack case for the iPhone last year, which again means I can stick my phone to anything. But now I have MagSafe chargers on my desk, in my car and on my bedside table where I can just walk in, instantly just attach my phone, charging it. And with a couple of these chargers, they're also in a perfect position and angle to be able to read my notifications or you know see incoming calls without having to pick my phone up. Now, most of these chargers also have places to charge my watch or headphones too. Whereas on the Pixel side of things, I'm yet to find any good, reliable, all-in-one chargers. In fact, the closest I've been able to find is basically this MagBack case, which now makes all MagSafe accessories like these wallets and chargers stick together. So I kind of like it this way. And number 10 is something that's become a repeating pattern for me with Pixel releases. And that is what I guess I'd call worldwide feature availability. Now, the number of times I would sit there and watch in awe at the Pixel presentation, seeing uh, you know all the cool new features on the Pixel, the Google Assistant, which can call up and book appointments for you, can answer phone calls for you, live translate between languages, only to find that when I actually get my phone, those features were only available to the US and nowhere outside. And they take a hugely long time to make their way out of the US. Now, these are flagship features that are very much a big part of why people buy Pixel phones. Now, I know Apple have done these small amounts recently with features like the SOS calling, but within a couple of months or so, those features are available outside of the US. And this is quite typical of Apple. I don't ever really recall any time Apple has touted a flagship feature in one of their iPhones, only to read in the small print or find out on launch day that it's a US only features. Now, when features are limited by country with Apple, typically there are still maybe eight or 15 countries that they launch with before expanding into other areas. Why do you think the iPhone beats the Pixel or maybe the Pixel beats the iPhone? Comment down below.